Thank you so much for the opportunity for giving me, Muhammad Ma'ruf Limi from the Bandung Institute of Technology Indonesia, for presenting my uh, project about the synchrotron radiation X-ray and micro XR based characterization of rock art pigments from the Karim Cave is Kalimantan, Indonesia. First, we're going to talk about the rock art. Rock art, as Dr. M Dr. Emily mentioned before, is a figure in the form of engravings, in the form of the paintings, and in the form of hand stencil. This is the illustration of rock art creation by spotting out the pigment from the mouth of the artist, I mean prehistoric artist. The rock art motifs uh, contains a civilization, anthropomorphic or uh, figure-like human, and zoomorphic, animal-like figures, geometrics or schematics, and hand stencil. This one is the figures of rock art engravings from Sydney, Australia. And this one is rock art painting in the form of anthropomorphic figures from the Namibia. And this one is the hand stencil in the positive hand stencil and the negative hand stencil from the Patagonia, Argentina. Next, the rock art in Indonesia. Indonesia is one of the countries in South Asia with the many prehistoric rock art sites distributed around the island of Sumatra. We have the Harimau Cave in Sumatra. We have, and in Java, in Kalimantan, we have a Putusi, Putusibau. We have Sankulirang. We have Katabang. And in Sulawesi, we have Kolonad, Kolonodale, Lindu, Maros Pangkep, and Muna. And we have also in Papua, we have some such uh, rock art site in Papua, especially in Misal. This one is a very characteristic. Uh, recently reported that the oldest hand stencil dated to 39,000 years before prison. And this one is the, the, uh, the hand stencil figures. And this one is the figurative in the form of the zoomorphism, the oldest figurative rock art dated 40,000 years before prison. And this one is the oldest hunting figurative in, uh, fo uh, found in the Maros Pankops in the South Sulawesi. We have, uh, it is dated 44,000 years before prison. It has been reported by Albert in 2014, 2018, and 2019 in Nature. Rock about rock art research in Indonesia. Indonesia, we are a developing country. So the main focus of rock art research in Indonesia is still on the meaning and the religious aspect of rock art. But only 70% we are focusing on the chemical composition or the physical chemical studies of the rock art. However, actually, the physical chemical studies, we could uh, have an information about the pigment composition, about the pigment provenance studies, about the indirect dating, about the pigment preparation techniques and the withering potency of the rock art. One of rock art site or rock art region in Indonesia is Sangkulirang Mangkalihat region. The Sangkulirang, Sangkulirang Mangkalihat region is located in the East Kalimantan. This one is Kalimantan Island in Indonesia. It's located here. And this rock art region have uh, uh, entirely uh, 15 uh, caves uh, contains rock art. One of it, uh, one of the rock art uh, in, uh, on this site uh, is dated 40,000 years old the oldest in the world, as I, as I mentioned before. Interestingly also, this rock art region contains a drawing, a drawing technique evolution. This one is zoomorphic motif, uh, painted with a reddish orange pigment, dated 40,000 years old. And this one is the hand stencil motif, uh, dated 20,000 years before prison, in the Liang Tewet cave. And this one is anthropomorphism motif, the black pigment, painted with the black pigment, dated 4,000 years old, and it is uh, 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 correlated with the migration of Austronesia to Indonesia from the Formosa Island. This one is a very unique because uh, actually the purple pigment is uh, commonly prepared by the heating of the, uh, the, the red ochre. So uh, in this era, the people of the prehistoric community already introduced fire for preparing the pigment and this one is made by the charcoal so they already introduced uh, uh, the burning or the charcoal uh, from the burning process to paint the rock art. One of the rock art cave in Sankular Mangkalihat is Karim Cave. The Karim Cave contains a very unique uh, figurative. This one is figures 
uh, uh, maybe is quite similar with the Tapirus indicus species, the extinct species in Malaya, or we call it Malayan tapir. Uh, it's already extinct uh, 6,000 years before prison. This one is painted by the dark red pigment, and this one is the uh, beehives like uh, figures, which is uh, very uh, similar with the beehive uh, tree in Kalimantan. This one. We could see uh, this one, uh, maybe it is fading, but uh, actually, when we uh, 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 change uh, and we uh, zooming this uh, picture, this one, we could have a figure something like this one with the beehives. And this one is hand stencil figures painted with red, uh, with red pigments. So we're gonna analyze this, uh, this di these different pigments, dark red pigment, the purple pigment, and the red pigments as object of our research. So the materials of the research is a three pigment sample with a purple, dark red, and red use. This one is the, uh, the sample of the purple pigment from the behaves like figures. And this one is the uh, dark red pigment from the uh, tapir figure. And this one is uh, the, red, uh, per, uh, the red pigments from the uh, hand stencil figures. It is our uh, samples. Uh, under the microscope, uh, the optical microscope. And this one is Mansell color from the Parahu Institute in the Griffith University. We use it for the, for, uh, to categorize the color of the pigment. The challenge of the research this is, uh, are the small amount of the sample due to the archaeological consideration of the cultural object and the sample in the powder form due to its low mechanical stability and highly fragile. And the sample has low content of the coloring minerals. The solution, so we apply the available synchrotron radiation based on characterization in the Southeast Asia. We have Synchrotron Light Research Institute in Thailand. Due to its high intensity of beam in a broad spectral range, high collimation, and fast time measurement, it could provide a high resolution data and lower detection limit. So we do the several characterization. We do the X-ray powder diffraction characterization. We do X-ray micro X-ray fluorescence by using laboratory XR, XRF. Uh, by using Orbis ADAX, and this one is the SANES uh, by using fluorescence mode due to the uh, lower concentration of the uh, iron. This one is the result of the X-ray uh, uh, X-ray powder diffraction characterization from the purple pigment, from the dark red pigment, and, and uh, the red pigment. This one we could see that all of the pigment sample contains of gypsum, content of calcite, due because the gypsum and calcite is uh, a minerals on the rock art, uh, in the, I mean the rock wall in the karstic region. So this one also we could see weavelite. Weavelite is uh, the, uh, the byproduct of the reaction of the me uh, metabolism of the microorganism with the calcium minerals. And this one is a hematite. Hematite is, uh, a hematite is uh, commonly used uh, to make a purple, uh, to make a red pigments, something like this one. And we, we, we assume and we conclude that the hematite is the a coloring agent of the materials, of, of the pigment, I mean. Uh, and we do the, uh, the SEM characterization uh, to, make, uh, to making sure uh, the, uh, the existence of the wave light so we could have the trait-like morphology, uh, something like this one, that's supporting the wave light finding because the wave light is coming from the reaction between the, uh, the uh, oxalic acid from the microorganism metabolism and the calcium minerals, calcite or calcium sulfate, and, the form, and it forms the uh, calcium oxalic or weavelite phase minerals. And then uh, what is the difference in the hematite between the, three, uh, between the three types of a pigment? So we zoom the highest peak of the hematite located here at a 22.1 degree. So we could have a different properties of hematite. The, 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 peak hemat the, the peak of hematite and the purple pigment showed very strong compared to another pigment. So we could, see, we could analyze by using the crystallite uh, size, by using the shader formula. So we, ha we, we have the, the FWHM value of the purple pigment is higher compared to another pigment. Then the crystallinity on the purple pigment is higher than the dark, dark red pigment and the red pigment. So the crystalline size of the purple pigment is high, uh, larger than the dark red and red pigment. So we could conclude that the purple pigment, yeah, presumably 
uh, obtained from the heating of the ochre in higher temperature because in the crystalline uh, in the crystalline minerals so uh, by using he heating treatment or by using the annealing or uh, sintering process we could have the more crystalline materials and we, we, we get a sharper peak and then uh, this one is micro xrf characterization this one is the elemental composition pigment we could see that the hematite on the purple pigment is higher than other pigment and the characterization by using um, elemental mapping by using micro xrf we could see the the irons is only located uh, entirely the brownish part of the pig of the sample the brownish part means the pigment and the brighter one is the rock so the iron is only located on the on the burnished part so meaning that the characterization from the xrd the hematite is the uh, is the coloring agent is true is already confirmed by the micro xrf characterization and the last characterization we use scenes the scene spectrize uh, uh, it is uh, we obtain by using uh, in the powder form the scene spectra we compared with the several standard the feo the uh, fe uh, uh, iron hydroxide or, or gutite and this one is a hematite we could see that spec the this spectra is quite similar with the uh, the hematite and we do the analysis of inflection point and we get the energy h position on the kh is located in the 7126.6 ev is uh, indicated the uh, the iron tree oxidation state so actually we do the linear combination fitting analysis also the linear combination fitting is quite uh, similar with the hematite is 100% uh, uh, contents of a hematite not another uh, iron oxide iron tree oxidation state species and then we uh, do the uh, deconvolution of the pre h saints fakh peaks this one is the result and we have the different absorption phenomena of the three pigments this one is the purple pigment with the higher absorption on the eg uh, transition and this one is quite low compared to the the purple pigment but it has a lower in the uh, 3 2 g uh, uh, transition and uh, so we could have uh, uh, we could have the ratio of the peak intensity so the purple pigment is lower uh, than the dark red pigment and the red pigments we assume uh, that there is a octahedral distortion on the purple and dark uh, in the purple pigment higher than another pigments due to the heating process the heating process uh, could uh, change the geometry of the coordination uh, around the iron atoms uh, i mean the, around the, the fe3 plus ions on the crystal uh, on, on the hematite crystal we come from this with the centroid part of the pre h peak the result indicate the presence of the distortion of the purple pigment uh, due to the octahedral coordination around the iron as a result of the different preparation techniques by burning the ochre at a different temperature this kind of the uh, hypothesis or the, this kind of the assumption is already confirmed by bora et al 2000 and, uh, 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 2012 in the case of the synthetic uh, hematite so we jump to the conclusion the each pigment are consistent of a hematite originated from the red ochre the purple pigment show the higher crystallinity than uh, dark red and red pigment the purple pigment has a higher hematite content than dark red and red pigment the purple pigment has a higher yeah, i mean the purple pigment show the lower t2g uh, compared to eg absorption ratio due to the higher octahedral coordination distortion of the iron as a result of the higher temperature burning pretreatment the different each pigment material whispers uh, was personally caused by different temperature burning of burning occurred during the pretreatment so this one is, is our schematic so uh, 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 this one is f uh, the purple this one is the dark red this one is the red so higher crystallinity and the higher trilmar treatment it is our uh, uh, hypothesis so the further research yeah, uh, we uh, we we, go, we are uh, need to uh, applying micro X at the characterization by obtaining suitable sample to get the deeper information about the crystal properties, especially about the cross section of the the pigmenting materials and the applying of micro sense characterization to get a more representative result about the electronic structural differences between each pigment. So thank you. This research was supported by ITB and the Synchrotron Thailand Central Lab, and this research was funded by the Ministry of Education of Indonesia and PMDS Scholarship. Yes, thank you.
just a comment. Since you made the link to Namibia, to Twiffle Fontaine, uh, yeah. and you showed a painting with a beehive. Yes. Oh. I, I've just seen a beehive in Namibia uh, in, in the paintings in the Irongo Mountains just two weeks ago. Yes, thank you. Could you? Yes, this one. Thank you, great talk. Uh, do you plan to work on uh, maybe model samples to perhaps precise the firing temperature of your pigments? Go back to, to try to have a precise value of the heating oh, temperature? The heating. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, the heating temperature, when uh, another, character, uh, another research already published about the synthetic, uh, uh, synthetic iron oxide of the hematite, the uh, they already prov uh, they already obtained the purple pigment in uh, the uh, uh, 900 degrees Celsius in the form of the purple pigment, changing from the, the red one. Yes, we have an idea. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting research. Uh, I don't have a very technical question, but I'm uh, looking at the handprints in the top right. This one? Yeah, so they're made at different moments, but how did they avoid blowing over earlier handprints so that they remain sharp? Do you have any idea about that? Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, you mean the size of the hand? No, w what I mean is that they're obviously not made on the same moment. Oh. But I, I imagine if you blow ochre over it, then you will cover an earlier handprint. And they all seem quite sharp. So I'm just wondering what they used to not blow over an earlier handprint uh, as order to obscure it then. Yes. Uh, th thank you for, for the question. Actually, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it's uh, sometimes like that. But I, 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 I could uh, answer that, th this, this question. But as, as some rock other uh, site in, 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 in Indonesia, uh, so many objects is repainted. So this one maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, one uh, one hand prints is uh, made first, and then another hand they they made another hand, and they made for another hand, and then I don't know. It's yeah. It's uh, maybe uh, it is to archaeology because I, uh, my background is in chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mo. Yeah, thank you so much. And we can thank again the, the speakers. Yeah.